Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back. Happy Friday to you. This is Nathan Holritz, your host here on the Boca Podcast. And I hope you've had a really good week. It's been a, a little bit of a wild and crazy week here, but I have to say good overall. And yet again, I'm going to be the old man in the room and say that I'm really thankful for some sun and blue sky outside. I think it's supposed to be close to 65 degrees or so here in Chattanooga today. So I'm pretty stoked about that too. Happy Friday to everybody. And I'm going to be introducing our brand new guest here in just a second. But if you are live streaming on Facebook or YouTube, dot com slash Boca podcast. Make sure to join in the conversation today. This is a really important conversation. And I know I keep saying that, but we have a lot of important conversations here. Really important conversation for business owners in general, certainly for photographers. We're going to be talking about workflow here uh, in just a little bit with our guests. I will introduce her here in just a second. But if you're listening to the audio version of this after the fact, please come hang out with us on the live streams occasionally if you can. YouTube or Facebook.com slash Boca Podcast. And um, you can join the conversation, ask questions, comment on the conversation at hand. Lots of fun. We want you to be part of the conversation. And then one other quick note, as I continue to remind everybody, take advantage of opportunities to donate, to give to local organizations, international, national organizations, donate a little bit of money. I made my donation to Charity Water today, put that up on screen there. And you know, I have to add this little bit of context. I don't do this enough, but we there, there are literally millions of people in the world who don't have regular easy access to clean drinking water. And here in our first world, United States of America, we complain about a lot of stuff. And frankly, a lot of it's BS. When you put things in context of the fact that people don't have access to clean drinking water, uh, I think it just changes our overall perspective as a whole. So keep that in mind. Take advantage of opportunities to give those who are actually and truly in need. I think that's really important to keep in mind uh, as we go through life on a day-to-day -day basis. All right, enough of the intro monologue. I want to introduce my brand new guest for today. Leo O'Connell is here with me. Leah, thank you for coming to hang out. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. You sound good, by the way. Lee and I were working on audio before we got started. <laughs> it's a tricky thing when it comes to podcasting, especially when it's live. Uh, but I think we've kind of got this dialed in, Leah, and, and you sound great. So that's good. Great. We're, <laughs> it's a good start. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to talk about workflow, simplifying workflow in just a little bit. Before we do that, though, I want to kind of just start the conversation by getting into your brand, your photography brand. And I'm yeah. going to actually pull this up on screen as we're talking for anybody listening in or watching, it's lo lofirefly.com. And maybe, Leah, if you can start with some context about that name and then mm -hmm. share with our listeners what your brand position is. Sure. Uh, the LO in front of the Firefly is uh, just my initials, <laughs> the domain that worked. Fair enough. Um, <laughs> so, but I'm Firefly Photography. Um, I wanted to create a name that had the essence of fun and playfulness, and it has some nostalgia for me, um, sort of an overview where the name came from. But my sessions, I'm a strictly family photographer and newborn, so my sessions are laid back sessions, brimming with joy for families who like to have fun and keep things simple. <laughs> Keep things simple. Yeah. And we're going to be yes. talking about simple as it relates to workflow in just a second, but I'm going to pull your website back up here and you've got that position statement there front and center above the fold. I don't have to scroll to find it <laughs> um, on your website, which is really great. Laid back sessions, um, brimming with joy for families who like having fun and keeping things simple. And you know, I, I can't think offhand of many of any photographers actually at all that I've had on the show that specifically reference simplicity in their brand position. Explain a little bit about that, if you will. Yeah, I mean, I've been in business, this will be my 10th year um, this year, and I've worked with families the whole time. And just throughout the course of that, I've met a lot of photographers and families who just sort of convolute the whole thing, <laughs> like it just seems to be so complicated. And as a lifestyle photographer, particularly, um, part of the whole emotion and feeling that I want to have with my sessions is this doesn't have to be so hard. And so I try to make the experience from start to finish reflect those values. You know, mm. like I, I don't just want the session to be fun. I want it to be really easy for them to book me. I want it yeah. to be really easy for them to plan the session and to know what to expect. I want it to be really easy for them to order prints and products afterwards, for them to leave a review, for them to do all of those things. It should just be really easy. And I think that that doesn't happen enough. 
<laughs> Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Um, so let's, I know we didn't plan on this, but let's dig into this just a little bit because I, I think this is a really important thing to note. Uh, and I've talked about this before in the context of time management. I know we're going to be talking about workflow today, so it'll be much even more relevant to that topic. But yeah. when I think about wedding photographers, I know you're a family portrait photographer. I think about mm -hmm. wedding photographers. Wedding photographers will, I know I've talked, I've heard talk about working crazy hours every week in order to run their business. And I know just from personal experience, having a run a photography business for over a decade, having been in the industry now for a couple of decades, that it actually only takes probably 15 or 20 hours a week to run a wedding photography business. I, I'm sure you could argue something comparable with portrait photography. Why do you think photographers tend to complicate things, number one, and maybe just make one recommendation to photographers, one step in the direction of simplicity when it comes to running their actual business? <laughs> yeah, I think one of the reasons that we tend to make it more complicated is because we have so many ideas and there are so many different ways to do things. I think it's just really easy to fall into the trap of saying, I want this experience to be really good for my clients. I'm going to add this. I'm going to add that. I'm going to, mm. you know, make sure they have this guide and that, you know, whatever. It's just like, it has to be so much. And yeah. <laughs> there's a famous, um, French philosopher who said, if I had more time, I would have written a shorter letter. And I think there's a lot to be said for that when it comes to editing our work down. Um, sometimes it actually takes longer to make things easier <laughs> or um, simpler on your end Agreed. and your client's end. It takes yeah. work on the forefront to see um, the results of that later on. I'm like furiously trying to take notes here, <laughs> write down that, that quote that you said, if I had more time, I would have written a shorter letter. Wow. Okay. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's really good. I like that. And yeah. I, I think that there is kind of an assumption, number one, whether it's conscious or subconscious that photographers take into running a photography business, which is that it is complicated. It is going to take 60, 80 hours a week. I have to stay up until two o'clock in the morning. And mm -hmm. they, they tend to maintain that mentality. And I hate to see that because I've, and I've seen it endlessly yeah. for years on Facebook and you, know, you just, all you have to do is scroll through a feed and just see the commentary. Yeah. And there's a certain mentality that goes along with that. And honestly, a big part of the goal here at the podcast is, is when we talk about this, helping photographers create sustainable businesses. And part of that is thinking more proactively when it comes to the way that we're running our businesses so we can do it more efficiently. And so the fact that we're going to be getting into workflow in detail today, I think is perfect for everybody. Like we all need Definitely. to figure out ways to simplify <laughs> our workflow to have more freedom and flexibility as business owners. So we'll go there here right. in just a second. I appreciate you kind of starting us off that way. Uh, let's let's kind of shift gears just for a second and talk about customer experience. And you talked about making it easy for customers to interact with your brand, to order services, to place print orders, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Is there a particular idea that is driving that customer experience? Is it simplicity or is there something else there? I mean, it, it's simplicity and it's, it's humanity. <laughs> it's just remembering that, you know, the customers that we're working with, they have lives and they have families and they have work and they have stresses and they are taking a step to hire you because they want really meaningful photographs of their family mm. and you know they don't need and one more thing to do you know and mm. they don't need one more like you know, customer service nightmare or <laughs> whatever it is, you know, like they don't want to have to read through all of a million details of your contract to know they can trust you. And they don't want to have to, you know, go through a million steps to give you their money, <laughs> just like yeah. plan their session, you know? Yeah. Um, so I think, you know, I see this a lot too in photography groups. It's like, they didn't respond to my gallery delivery soon enough and they didn't, you know, like they're asking me so many questions. Why are they doing this? And I think that's, that's just, um, I think that's a personal roadblock from the photographer's point of view. Like instead of putting that on your client as, mm. well, they're not reading the material or not, like maybe you didn't say it clearly enough. Mm. Like maybe you just need to ask yourself what you can do to make their experience better and make them really enjoy this so they'll come back yes <laughs> it's all about just treating them as human beings and being real with them hmm. yeah you mm -hmm. know this is a really great point actually and i'm glad you talk about the importance of we as business owners taking responsibility 
for the customer experience. One, yes, we should minimize any potential barrier to entry, make it as easy as possible to interact with our brand to get the service or the product that we're selling. Um, but then if that isn't happening, you're right, there is a tendency. All you have to do is go to Facebook or forums or otherwise <laughs> yeah. and see photographers just going off the chain talking about their clients and how ridiculous they are. And, and mm -hmm. something that I do internally with my team at Photographers Edit, we've been in business now for about 14 years. We're a multi-million dollar company. And yet we still, on a probably weekly basis, certainly every couple of weeks, have conversations about what it is that we can do to simplify, to clarify the information that we present on our site, that we present on our support site. In fact, the conversation I was just having with um, one of our team was, if we have to, we actually during our team meeting yesterday, if we have to put information on our support site and try to clarify that, the question that I'm asking is why do we even have to have a support site to clarify what we're supposed to be presenting clearly up front, right? That's a great point, yeah. <laughs> and, and I think that's applicable to really any business. What are we doing to make it as easy as possible? And, and really, you're highlighting that, Leah, and I think it's so good. Mm -hmm. What are we doing to make it as easy as possible to interact with our brand, to understand what we offer, how to go about acquiring that service, and then be able to get the finished product as easily as possible? I think that's yeah. just a really important thing. Yeah, me too. <laughs> well, I, I'm excited already about this conversation because this is this is going to be really important, not not only for our listeners, but for myself as well. Just a good to, to kind of reiterate these ideas and think through them again. I want to shift gears yet again though and i guess in some ways it act, it's actually related we talk about time management right so simplifying <laughs> workflow simplifying our lives especially mm -hmm. as it relates to finding some type of balance between running our businesses and making time for the important people in our lives yeah. i'd love to hear how you're intentionally proactively creating space for yourself and for the important people in your life yeah well so i'm a i'm a mom of two i've got a six-year-old and a two-year-old so I've raised my business right alongside my babies. Wow. <laughs> um, I actually started my business before I had kids and then, you know, have gone through becoming a mom and moves and all of that kind of stuff too. So I've sort of had to learn the ins and outs of running a business and running a life. <laughs> I'm running a home all at mm -hmm. the same time. Mm -hmm. And so there are really blurred lines that way. Um, but one of the things that I do that I've always really done from the beginning is to try to just be really proactive about noticing my tensions, noticing you know, like all boundaries come from attention. So when I, ha when I say like the boundaries that I have now, I have them because I didn't have them once and it was a mm. problem. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so like things that I do now are, you know, I have, I do social media breaks an hour a day, uh, a day, a week, a week, a month that I completely log off. Um, I shoot on the weekends, but I don't do any more than two sessions on a Saturday and one on a Sunday. And if I do those sessions, then I always take a day off during the week, um, as sort of like a Sabbath to reset. Um, I, you know, I just, I've always wanted to format my business around my life and not my life fit into the cracks of my business, mm. you know? Um, so I think a lot, a lot of times we see like when people talk about workflows and they talk about how they run their businesses, they come at it from a place of like, oh, I fell deep into photography and I loved it so much and I just like worked myself into the ground until like I completely burned out and then I found workflows yeah. <laughs> and I found systems and I just sort of actively reject that notion that that has to be the way things are, you know? Like I don't, I don't think it has to be that way. I don't think that you have to reach a burnout phase before you recognize that there needs to be something that changes. And um, so that's just sort of how I how I operate. You know, if, if I feel like I'm working too much or I'm missing things and I need to restructure things or mm -hmm. if I feel like I'm, you know, just like if, if something's not working, fix it. <laughs> you can't just say like, I, I don't like this and this is just, you know, my lot in life. Like you know, you're in charge of your business and you get to set yep. the rules. And that's so true. It's so weird yeah. to me. Uh, and again, we see this in culture. And I, I think again about the Facebook feed, because all you have to do is it's funny <laughs> yeah. how you can just scroll through Facebook and kind of figure out where culture is at the moment. Right. Yeah. And, and that's one of the things that seems to be 
a tendency of our culture, certainly in our industry as well, is just this almost, again, whether conscious or, or unconscious, uh, or subconscious rather, this assumption that this is how, quote unquote, things are. That mm -hmm. you as a human being, an individual business owner, don't have the ability to make choices or to change the choices that you make to change the life that you're currently living. Yeah. Um, almost like, you know, I, like you can't, there's, there's certainly things in life that we can't control, but when it comes to how we're choosing to spend our time, that is literally one of the things that we have the most control of. Exactly. And yet we act like we can't. And, mm -hmm. and I think that is, uh, well, certainly short-sighted and a misnomer ultimately. And so taking some ownership and responsibility in that, I think is super important. It'll make a massive difference when it comes to not only being able to run a really great business, but then also still having a life amidst that. This idea mm -hmm. that we have to work 60, 80 hours a week or else, you know, um, it's just <laughs> yeah, kind of a weird what? notion like, that I don't know who came up yeah. with. Now, the flip yeah. side of that is certainly there's no need to be lazy. But I think if we work intentionally, we work intelligently. And then as we're going to be talking about create intelligent systems that enable us to run a, a business more efficiently, we can run a business. We can work really hard at that business. But then we can also have space and time and uh, quite a bit of it, actually, if, if we're really smart about it. So um, good reminder and actually a great yeah. segue to my next question to you, which has to do with delegation. Again, our, our, so much of our podcast is about running businesses efficiently yeah. and sustainably. <laughs> Delegation is a big, big part of that. Naturally, I talk about editing as, a, as an editing mm -hmm. company owner, also because I understand that editing is a, probably the biggest, most time-consuming element of running mm -hmm. a photography business. But there is album design. There is other administrative tasks, email, social media, accounting. I mean, the list kind of goes on as far as what we can delegate. Is this something that you've experimented with in your business? What kind of success have you found in it? Oh, definitely. <laughs> I have. <laughs> Yes, quite the journey through delegation. Um, I, I've been, so I guess the first five years of my business, I was solo, but things were growing really slowly at that point. I, we moved three times in three years, the three different states, and then I became a mom and then like things were, it just wasn't growing <laughs> quickly. So I didn't really sense the urgency of delegation at that point, nor did I have the financial ability to support it. Um, but I always sort of had it in my vision that I wanted to have a team or to have some sort of support because mm -hmm. that's actually one of the reasons that I named my business Firefly Photography and not Leo O'Connell Photography is because I never wanted it to just be the Leo O'Connell show. <laughs> like I just wanted to have an environment where people could, other people could pour into this business as well. Um, so in 2019, I guess the first thing that I delegated was the, <laughs> was my systems <laughs> and I delegated myself and my own time through the systems and workflows that I set up. Um, and then I delegated my, uh, accounting by hiring a CPA. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm which was life changing. Oh, it's and, huge. Oh my goodness, to have somebody yeah. that like helps you with that. I, for me, that was a, I, I hate to say it cause it sounds dramatic, but like a fear inducer, anxiety inducer, oh, like the, yeah. thinking about managing finances and doing taxes and, and all this other stuff was just, yeah. So to have somebody on your team that you know you can rely on that helps you with that is, it's just incredible. Definitely. Um, that was a huge one for me. And then in 2019, I uh, hired my first employee. Um, I hired her in the summer of 2019 as a studio manager, and she just started working for me as like a about 10 hours a week. I started delegating um, album design to her. I taught her um, just like how to order, do print ordering and packaging, and um, she did some like customer service emails, like answering questions that would come back after gallery delivery and stuff like that. So just sort of like I was ramping her into the business. And um, then I found out I was pregnant with my um, second. And wow. it just became even more. I was like, yes, this is why I'm doing this, you know? Yeah. So like I, through the, the end of 2019, I was able to, to basically get it to a point where she wasn't just doing tasks. She was really part of the team. And she was um, helping me take like actually develop my workflows like I would tell her this is what I want to happen and this is how I envision this process kind of going can you make something that makes that work in my CPA or in my uh, um, like management system and then she would and she would take it and run with it and 
So she just became invaluable to me. I trained her in email and she took over my email so I could take a full maternity leave come January when my son was born. Um, and I was completely like out of the, I mean, it was winter for family photographers. That's like a little slower season, but, but you know, I was able to really entrust someone else with my whole business. And that was, that was like a amazing, like milestone for me. Um, of course we all know, you know, 2020, what happened, you know, when the dumpster fire of 2020, Mm. like it, um, and I had this new employee, but I consider it one of the biggest joys in my business that I was able to use the use the business that was coming in and the business that I had come in over the past years to continue to support her and continue to develop the business even whenever I wasn't shooting for the whole first six months of the year you know um and we still grew you know it's crazy like I the value that she brought to the table for me and for Firefly was just invaluable. Um, and not necessarily even in revenue as much mm. as it was like the ability to be okay with mm. not working. And I still paid someone and like, uh, and I didn't have, like I was, I had a newborn, you know, <laughs> like I had <laughs> a newborn in a pandemic and my oldest kid was home from school full time yeah. and like, you know, like all of yeah. this stuff. And I didn't have to be stressed out of my brain because somebody else was helping, you know? Yeah. Well, and that's, that's, I think a, it's good to note that the value that an employee or a third party that we're, that we're hiring for a particular service brings to our lives as business owners could be related to freeing us up to spend more time on something that's going to help grow the business. It could also just be to give us a little bit of space and time to be able to manage our personal lives and give us that kind of flexibility. And that's again, also important to note. And Mm -hmm. as long as you've got the right systems in place and you're teaching those people well, they should be able to help run those uh, those elements of your business for you, which is uh, that's really great to highlight. Uh, and speaking mm-hmm. of, actually, Brittany is tuning in. Brittany Carey is turning in from Facebook. She says tuning in while drowning and oh. editing. She <laughs> says definitely going to take up yeah. the outsourcing soon. Brittany, we'd love yeah, to help great. you at Photographer's Edit too. Yeah. I'll give Photographer's Edit a little bit of a shout out there. But thanks for tuning in. And for those of you that are streaming live, please don't hesitate to jump in, comment, ask questions, have some fun with us, <laughs> be part of the conversation today. A couple more questions before we get into workflow. Leah, um, talk to me a little bit about an impactful self-help book or business book that has made a big difference in your life in the last few years that you would want to recommend to our listeners. Oh, so many. Um, So, so many. Uh, A few just off the table, like biggest ones. Um, Big Magic, I read recently by Elizabeth Gilbert. Yes. Um, Just obsessed with that book. It really, like, for a photographer... Um, (laughs) I read so many business books and so many, um, technical books and things like that, that I hadn't actually like focused on the creative element of it that much. And this book just opened my eyes to a lot of different aspects of creativity and, and how to see it from a different point of view. And I, I just loved, I love that book so much. And then, um, Another one is the book, it's called Leaders Eat Last um, by Simon Sinek. A lot of people know him from the TED Talk and the book Start With Why. Um, But this book, Leaders Eat Last, was, um, yeah, there it is. It's it's so good. It's from the perspective of somebody who, uh, I guess talking about the, um, the mentality of leading a team, leading a business as with context through the Marine Corps, <laughs> which seems um, maybe a little off for some photographers, but um, really it comes down to leading from a place of service. Um, leaders eat last. It's not all about sure. you. <laughs> it's, yeah. not, it's not all about um, like the way you want to do it and the way, I mean, those things are very important, but, um, the way that we can show up most for ourselves oftentimes is through giving to others and listening to others. Um, so that book was just really eye opening for me as well. Cool. Okay. So we, yeah, for those of you that are live streaming, you saw this for those of you with the audio, big magic, uh, by Elizabeth Gilbert and then leaders eat 
last, why some teams pull together and others don't by Simon Sinek. And we'll put those mm -hmm. in the show notes at bocapodcast.com. One last quick question for you, Leah, before we get to workflow, talk to yeah. me about a favorite piece of gear in your camera bag. Like what's a go-to thing? It'd be totally random if you'd like, but what is that go-to mm. piece of equipment in your, in your gear bag? Um, so no shocker here. I'm a gear minimalist and I don't keep a lot of things in my bag. Um, I don't take basically anything with me on sessions other than my cameras and my strap and <laughs> that's it. Okay. Um, but I'll, I'll say my, my 50, uh, my Nikon, I shoot right now. I shoot with two bodies a Nikon and a Sony. Um, just because I haven't upgraded the other one yet to a mirrorless, but I will one day. Um, but my 50 millimeter lens is my go-to. It's my OG, and that's why I mention it. I've had it since the beginning of my business. It's the first lens I ever bought, and I still use it for probably 75% of my sessions. So, yeah. <laughs> it's always nice to have that fallback, yeah. that go-to that you're yeah. comfortable with. You know, it works, it does the job. And, yeah, yeah. it is funny. I mean, you talked about, and this is actually going to be a beautiful segue into to my next question as we get into workflow. But there's so many options out there and it's easy mm -hmm. to get lost in all the options. There's this, um, there's yeah. a books. I think the book is actually called paradox of choice that I read a number of years ago. Yeah. Incredible book. Um, and I, and I actually recommend it to, to most people listening in because amidst the options, uh, all the options that we have to consider, it's easy for us to get distracted by all the options and as a result, not get the things done that are actually important. And, yeah. um, and to that end, a lot of times it just takes two or three pieces of gear to actually get the work done, even photographically too. So it's a good thing to keep in mind. And again, I appreciate mm -hmm. that reminder, but you know, you leading up to our conversation today, you, you said, and I'll, and I'll quote you here with all the advice and options for how to run a business in our industry, photographers often have idea overload and their offers become bloated by trying to do all the things. And you alluded to that mm -hmm. earlier, Leah, but I'm curious here, just at the outset of the conversation with all the available education, the workshops, the conferences, et cetera, how do photographers narrow down their focus on what content to consume? Um, so they're not just simply taking in all the things just because it's fun or because they want to be distracted or they don't yeah. want to do the actual hard work. Um, what, what principles should drive a more focused approach to business and workflow? It is, it really is so overwhelming. <laughs> you know, it's, it's hard to kind of keep your focus on the prize, but, um, that that's really like my number one tip is think for yourself. You know, I, it's, especially when we get anxious about what decision is coming next, um, or a change that we're about to make in our business, we immediately go and see what other people are doing. And, and that is helpful. It can be, mm. but before you go there, you have to decide what are you actually looking for and, and not specifically like you don't want just affirmation for someone to tell you that you're doing it right. Um, what, what do you want the outcome to be? What do you want the result of whatever it is you're seeking to be? And, and you have to, you have to just like take a step back and, and like think about again, like you're in charge of your own business. So you have to, you can't just like go into the sea and just like take it all in or mm -hmm. you're never going to have any focus to your business and your clients won't know what you're about either. Right. So a think for yourself, <laughs> start there. Well, no, that, that's good. And, and I'm, as mm -hmm. you're talking to, I'm thinking, think mm -hmm. for yourself, number one, and two, part of that thinking for ourselves is to be super clear as you're talking about super clear about what it is that we're trying to accomplish. If we ask the right questions, we'll get the right answers, right? But mm -hmm. I think to your point, a lot of times photographers, and I've certainly been guilty of this too, a lot of times we just kind of jump into the mix, like you said, to yeah. see what other people are doing, what other people are saying, what they're thinking. And we just like, okay, well, that kind of sounds good. I'll take a little bit of that. And that looks cool. I'll do a little bit of that. And oh, that, that's fun too. That's shiny. I'll, I'll grab that thing. Mm -hmm. and, and so what we do is super haphazard versus mm -hmm. taking a step back, thinking for ourselves about what it is that we're trying to accomplish. What are our personal goals as a result? Then what are our business goals? And now let's go looking for the things that actually help us support or that will support and enable us to achieve those yeah. goals. That's a much, much healthier place to be. Yeah. I call it throwing spaghetti at the wall. <laughs> like we're just like, let's try that and that and that and that. And it just yeah. never really actually works together. 
Hmm. So if you're just taking styles and from like 10 different people and you're taking, you know, like, I'm going to edit this way and then that way. And then that one looks pretty. Let me try their style. And then like, you're never going to find your own way. And that's ultimately why your clients will hire you is because they want your way. Hmm. Okay. Well, so Mm -hmm. I guess let me just kind of keep the conversation going then as it relates to making decisions for ourselves. You know, we as as business owners, we have to clearly define a workflow for ourselves. And Mm -hmm. I think a lot of photographers just we we do workflow, right? That's just Mm -hmm. we we process images, we add images to our website, we send emails, Mm -hmm. um, we pack our gear to go on a shoot, all these different things that we do to run a photography business. I think a lot of photographers don't think of that as workflow. And so mm-hmm. the, the moment that they hear workflow or workflow design, they're like, oh, I'm checking out, you know, nerd alert yeah. or whatever. Um, <laughs> because in some weird way, they assume that they're not part of that. And the reality is they are part of that. And, and to your point just yeah. a second ago, they have the ability to choose proactively how to design that workflow so that it works for them, it supports their goals, and it ultimately gives them a bit more freedom and flexibility in their lives. What does it mean then when, when we're talking about designing workflow uh, you say that burnout should be should not be the turning point, right? A lot of photographers mm-hmm. kind of let themselves get to this place where they're totally burnt out. Uh, mm-hmm. What does it mean about the urgency of getting started in workflow design as soon as possible? Yeah. Um, well, I think that it, you, you said a lot of photographers think of it as like a nerdy thing. <laughs> yeah, they do. <laughs> um, yeah. I think so too. I hear that a lot, but I actually have a different perspective of it because um, I, I see it as a very creative practice to refine your workflow. Um, whenever I I remember a time when I was little that it was probably like middle school and I was working on poetry, writing this poem for school. And I couldn't, you know, quite figure out what I wanted to say. And I asked my mom for help and she said, you know, poetry is really just trying to say the most about a certain topic in the least amount of words. Mm. And I, you know, it's funny, the things that stick with you, <laughs> something about that just like That's clicked good, in my though. mind. Yeah. And I was like, yes, you know what? Like systems are like that. Systems can be so creative. Systems are really, how can I get the most amount of, of output of value for in the least amount of steps and in the least amount of words, you know, when you talk about like email, <laughs> um, people are like, I'm drowning in email. I'm you know, like I'm spending all this time responding to messages and stuff. Well, like your clients don't want to be in their email either. (laughs) Again, going back to humanity, like they don't want to be reading like a five paragraph message about preparing for their session from you. Like, so what can you do to, to simplify things? It's going to make it easier on you. It's going to make it easier on them. Create some templates, fill in the details personalize it a little bit, you know, like you can have a really personalized, uh, business and experience for your client without it being like robotic and still not spend 20 minutes on every email. (laughs) It just doesn't have to be that way. It's true. Yeah. But I I think, you know, a lot of times what, what happens too, I mean, there is this kind of assumption or projection that being intentional with workflow is a nerdy thing and I'm a creative and I just, I go with the flow. And of course, I, I think a lot of times that's just a cop out in the end, it, yeah. it ends up eating the business owner alive because they haven't been intentional in designing workflow. But the flip side of that is, and I know this from personal experience and I like workflow design, <laughs> is that sometimes you can get overwhelmed at the notion of trying to create a workflow, right? It seems like there's just this endless number of steps um, mm-hmm. in, in order to to begin working in a particular way. And, and mm-hmm. I say that, I mean, on this, I've said this countless times probably at this point on the podcast that it may take a little bit of time to get a workflow set up. The massive benefit that comes from that is more than rewarding and more than worth the time and the effort. Yeah. But a lot of times that very overwhelm kind of inhibits photographers from getting started designing that workflow. So to yeah. that point, would you make a few recommendations as to how to simplify, uh, minimize the overwhelm, simplify that getting started process when it comes to designing workflow? Definitely. I mean, I think people, if you 
frame creating a workflow as like this one big project, like I'm going to make my workflow now. It's, it's way too overwhelming. That's never, that's not practical. So really, I think one of the most helpful things you can do is to, to break it up into like little micro workflows. Like here's my pre-session workflow. Here Mm -hmm. is my preparing for my Mm -hmm. shoot workflow. Mm -hmm. Here's my post-session workflow. And if you just like take those pieces and create systems around those first, eventually you're going to have a whole, a whole process from start to finish. Now backing that up, I think that's actually secondary, um, to what needs to happen first, which is actually thinking through the real problems that you're facing in your business or the way that you want things to look ideally. Um, you know, we, we have this tendency of just being like, my clients aren't prepared, so I'm going to make a client guide and I'm going to give it to them um, as soon as they book. And really, like, there's a lot of other opportunities that you can explore there about ways that you can prepare your clients that might actually solve the problem better depending on who your client is and, and how the rest of your workflow goes. So it is kind of like a puzzle. Like, you need to fit all those pieces together. You can't just isolate the experience or else you're going to have, like, this really hodgepodge, like, situation of a workflow that doesn't actually effectively work together. So, you know, while... A lot, of, a lot of people will come at this problem of, of creating a workflow from the perspective of like, well, write down everything you do and then, you know, see what you can delegate, see what you can eliminate. And we've all heard that advice and it's really great. Like I do that. That's really great for um, like operational tasks. That's stuff that you put in your Trello board and your Asana or whatever you use if you are doing that. But for the actual like full workflow of how your client engages with your business from start to finish you have to think about where the breakdowns are happening are they you know are they falling off in the booking process um before they actually complete like are they emailing and then just like falling away okay well we need to think of a solution that is going to going to help you convert faster and that's going to play into the system that you create in your pre-session workflow does that make sense yeah i actually i actually made a few notes here as you were talking and Mm -hmm. the first and you were i think just kind of alluding to this just now as well is to break the workflow the so-called workflow down into simple steps if we look at Mm -hmm. this thing um, when i talk about project management for example a project is made up of multiple tasks and if we look at Mm -hmm. a project like I need to clean out the garage. You know, the garage hasn't been cleaned for like 10 years and it's it's an absolute <laughs> nightmare of a place. Yeah. If I just say today, here is my task, clean the garage. Well, naturally I'm gonna be overwhelmed by that because the reality is it's not just an individual task, it's a project that's made up of multiple steps or multiple tasks. Mm-hmm. So I first need to break that so-called workflow down into pieces, small pieces that make it a lot easier to check something off one at a time, a little bit at a time, and eventually I knock out that whole project. I think that's super important when it comes to workflow. Mm -hmm. The next thing I wrote down is to break, uh, excuse me, don't be fancy for the sake of being fancy. Uh, And I think that's really important too, right? It's, It's not always about having the fanciest or most complicated of solutions. Yeah. It, it, again, we have to be intentional about what it is we're trying to accomplish and then being super intentional about trying to find a simple solution to that, simple for us, but also simple for mm-hmm. the client is actually a really great place to start. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and then we have to be super intentional as well about what it, it, well, and I think that brings it back around about what it is that we're trying to accomplish. Be intentional about what we're trying to accomplish. What's the goal here? And then we can answer it with simple steps that we, you know, we break it down into multiple simple yeah. steps and not trying to be too fancy. So yeah, full circle. And- yeah, and I mean, being simple, like creating a simple solution doesn't mean that the process of making that solution is going to be easy. Like simple and easy don't necessarily go hand in hand. Mm, like mm-hmm. that's just a, a nuance to remember. Like again, yes. going back to the poetry analogy, like it takes work to make things simpler. That's why minimalism is a huge thing. Right? Mm-hmm. Like because we we initially like go for go overboard it's just like our nature especially as people who like we want to give we want to serve we want them to have all the things they need and it actually like serving people well doesn't necessarily mean just like throwing everything you've got at them like it takes actually a little bit more work to make that experience really nuanced and finessed so that things run really smoothly and Um, They don't like you meet those questions at the door before they have to ask them. You are just like 
giving by sometimes you're giving by just like like making it like here you go <laughs> here's your guide here's your like steps like and it's it doesn't have to be like here's 43 emails from the time you booked to the time you have your wedding and here's like some some brides are gonna be like whoa like too much <laughs> yeah, you just, just need to like think about who your client is and what they actually need what problems are you actually trying to solve yeah and do so like you said in a simple way it doesn't necessarily mean it's easy to, to create yeah. that workflow but at the end of the day making it easy for or simple for the client is, is super mm -hmm. important. Let's actually talk about principles then, kind of underlying key principles. Uh, you mentioned to me ahead of time that you have three principles here to share to create a mm -hmm. simple, efficient workflow in business. What are those three big ideas that photographers should yeah. keep in mind? First of all, I think it's thinking openly. Don't just go into your workflow creation at, with these preconceived notions of how a session or an experience has to be because you saw somebody else do it. So be open to other ideas. This goes back to the um, sort of when we're talking about like what you consume and like where you get ideas from and stuff like you, <laughs> it's important to be, uh, be discerning about what you take in, but it's also in important to be open and diverse in the information that you're reading and creating and the experiences that you're having so that you're not just closed off and you're able to sort of discover all of the opportunities that could be on the table for solving this problem. Don't just go into it with like, I got to make this thing work. I really want to make a client guide. So I've got to figure out how to do that. I mean, I'm picking on client guides, but I have a client guide. <laughs> um, it's just like, it's just one thing that I feel like people are like, it's like a, a tangible, like, gotta have this. Mm. Um, secondly, I think going back to the, the, um, the big picture of like solving your actual problems, <laughs> people, uh, a lot of times add extra steps that don't need to be there, uh, simply for the sake of um, I don't really know what it's for the sake of, I think it's just for the sake of like trying to do things like everyone else, maybe. Um, yeah, you know, I, it yeah. makes me think actually about, it. I was teaching a Lightroom workshop for at PPA, the imaging USA conference a number of years ago. And there were, I don't know, something like 600 photographers in a room, really big group of people. Mm -hmm. And I was teaching this workflow and the workflow is meant to be simple. In fact, our editing team, we, we built the workflow for our editing team at photographers edit. It was built around this, mm -hmm. this particular workflow and it was meant to be super simple. And I, I don't think photographers, I, 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 there's like some kind of ego thing at play maybe where they're like, it, it has to be fancy because I'm fancy and you know, I'm a professional or something. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. But literally somebody, as I'm going through this workflow that this, this guy raises his hand, he's like, why are you going so fast? And, and I'm like, I, and I wasn't, it wasn't about, cause I wasn't going super fast as in like, I'm, I'm talking fast. I'm yeah. not normally a super fast talker. I think it was more a question about why is the workflow so quick? Um, mm -hmm. and, and I don't know, there, there's this kind of internal, I didn't say it out loud, but there's this almost internal response, which is why would we not want to go fast? This is right. about moving quickly. <laughs> exactly. It doesn't yeah. need to take a long time. Mm -hmm. We don't, some of the, the details that we place so much importance on as photographers, these nuances are distractions. They're not, they don't actually mm -hmm. matter to the client and the client's experience. And yet we place so much importance on them and it gets in the yeah. way. So yeah, keep it simple. Minimize the number of moving parts <laughs> in the workflow. That's important. Yeah. I, and I think um, the third thing that uh, that really helps when refining your workflow, if you already have workflows, but you're trying to sort of figure out how to make this easier on yourself, is notice when you're having those moments that are like, Ugh, I'm spending so much time doing this or like, uh, like they're asking this question over and over again. And like, those are like these little light bulbs that you should, they're like breadcrumbs along the way of, of that you need to be picking up and being like, Oh, there's an opportunity there to, to, to make a system around this or to, to minimize this workflow or to outsource this. Uh, I mean, you were talking about editing before and how it is one of the most time consuming things. And I mean, <laughs> I work, I work 15 to 20 hours now a week um, and run my business 
as much as the way that I want to run it. <laughs> it doesn't mm-hmm. need more than that sure. um, at this point for what I have. Um, but I, I outsource my editing. My employee who was with me in 2019 and 2020, part of 2021, she moved. And I, because I had trained her to edit, I now contract her and she does my editing. Like, because I wasn't willing to take that time back, you know, like I wasn't willing to be like, okay, well, here's another 10 hours of editing. Like it's an opportunity to say like, okay, well the team is like, if that's not working anymore, you being here in person isn't going to happen anymore. So how can we, how can we make this work? How can I still solve this problem of eliminating my editing? I've already trained you. I've already, like, you know my business, you know it well, we've got a system in place, like, let's tweak it and make it virtual. Like, there are ways to just sort of tweak things and and make it, make it work for you. Um, Yeah, it it doesn't... (laughs) Yeah. Well, I'm taking notes here again as, as you're talking. So I just kind of jump reviewing the three points that you just made. Think hopingly. Um, and, and I actually pulled up as you were talking about that. I, I pulled up a book. It, it's I will say it's one that you kind of get in the weeds with. It, it's a little bit of a deep read, but a book called Lateral Thinking Creativity Step by Step. I, I read this a number of years mm-hmm. ago. And uh, it's a guy from a guy who's just brilliant, actually maybe a legitimate genius talking about how to think outside the box intentionally. People, I think in some cases, think that thinking outside the box or thinking creatively is something that just comes from quote unquote inspiration or comes Mm -hmm. naturally. And and the reality is that at least as he proves it, you can do so intentionally and he shares how to do that. So I'll just throw that book out there. We'll link to it in the show notes. Again, lateral thinking, creativity, step-by-step by a guy named Edward de Bono. Uh, think openly, number one. Number two, minimize the number of moving parts. And we talked about that for a bit. And then number three, notice where there are questions, issues, or barriers to entry mm-hmm. for the client and take advantage of the opportunity to address those. Talk to me about flexibility, because I think a lot of times mm-hmm. photographers, maybe they did establish a workflow intentionally. And then there's the suggestion that comes along. I mean, we run into this endlessly when it comes to suggesting outsourcing editing. Photographers are so used to doing things a particular way. They assume even, in fact, even get obsessed with the idea that they have to do it that particular Mm -hmm. way. And so the notion of outsourcing editing or shifting their workflow, redesigning their workflow, doing something different than what they're used to, they're super opposed to. Why do you think that is? And how do you think photographers can get better at being flexible, adjusting along the way? Why do I think that is? I think it's fear. I think it's fear and um, time deficit. (laughs) Like people have this uh, idea of like if I have spent so much time building this thing, then I can't like change it. Like that was a waste of time. Um, But really like the bigger waste is continuing to do it in a way that doesn't work for you and you doesn't allow your business to grow in the direction that it needs to grow Mm. for a changing life. Like, you know, we have to hold our businesses open-handed and I I mean, parents, especially, I think understand this, like nothing is, I mean, the whole world understands this now. Like nothing is predictable. Nothing is, you know, a sure thing. So Mm -hmm. we, we have to be able to be flexible and be um, able to pivot when we need to. And, that's a lot easier to do when you've got a when you've got a firm foundation. Um, even if you are changing all of your systems, <laughs> plugging my computer in. Um, even if you've changed, have to change like a lot of your workflows. If you've got a like a good foundation under you, then that it's not going to be as difficult. It's like it's like building a house. Um, if you you know you start with the blueprint, the blueprints you have the plans, you dig the ditch, you build the foundation, all that stuff. And like, it, you might decide to, you know, change things here and there. You can paint it, you can add some wallpaper, you can change the lighting. Um, but you just sort of like grow it from there. And if you need to adjust it, those things are easy to do. But if you have built your house on sand and then you like try to add an extra room here and then like knock down that wall and oh crap it's load bearing <laughs> and like you have all of like I don't know how to build a house but <laughs> uh, <laughs> that was a good analogy though yeah. Good. Yeah. <laughs> but, but you know it, you have to have that foundation and, and then it's a lot easier to tweak things from there um Rather Let me than jump in really quick and like, just ask you though it, when and, and I know this is a topic in and of itself a whole mm-hmm. podcast at least when you mm-hmm. talk about a firm foundation what does that mean from the standpoint of running a photography business what are you referencing there I'm just referencing like having 
having values, having structure in place. A lot of new photographers, you know, like they'll say, I don't need a CRM yet because I don't have like a lot of business or I don't have that many clients. Like I can run it on these spreadsheets and it's fine. But the foundation is, you know, you start working on those templates. Now you start working on your workflows. Like every time you come back from a session or have a session experience, you ask those questions like what went well, what didn't go well, how can I refine this experience to make it better? And you just start building as you go. That's building your foundation. That's building your home on steady ground. And if you don't, if, if you wait until you're, you know, you've already got all these walls up and you're doing the plumbing and you're doing the electricity and then you're like oh wait gotta go back and like tear everything down and like build all these other things because that wasn't working it becomes a lot more complicated yeah. it, you're making it harder on yourself yeah yeah yeah. that's good that's good i you know we were talking earlier about this idea of kind of well you mentioned values number one um and and ultimately an overarching set of goals as well what it is that we're trying to achieve and as long as we've got those baseline or that baseline or that set of baselines in place uh, the idea of flexing and flowing making adjustments tweaks refinements mm -hmm. along the way is definitely more possible and i think that's that's super important i guess when it comes to adjustment to workflow or adjustment of workflow mm -hmm. it doesn't always have to be about growth though Sometimes mm -hmm. maybe it could just be about creating space, a little bit of time for ourselves, for the important people in our life. Yeah. Uh, it, where, I guess, how do our listeners, how do photographers, business owners gauge whether it's time to create efficiency in their business for the sake of having more time to allocate to growing their company versus mm -hmm. creating efficiency in their business for the sake of having more space for themselves or something that they may need to attend to in their personal life? Can I tell a story? Please go ahead. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I have very clear experience with this. Sure. Um, for the first uh, probably six years of my business, I did uh, in-person sales and that worked okay for me. I always thought it was really important to sell um, products and to, I wanted all my clients to walk away with prints. Um, so I, I did that for a long time in, in several different ways and capacities, but uh, I remember this one night, my husband and I, we had our two-year-old at the time, our oldest, and uh, we were living in a townhome that was like a three-level. Um, when you walked in, that was like my office room, and then the rest of the home was in the upper two levels. And I would have clients come over to my home to view their photos, and I would go watch a slideshow with them and I'd make them homemade cookies and we would like go through each photo and I would take their orders and it was like ideally like great yeah, <laughs> but yeah. um you know I, I sort of had this like notion that like maybe this was a little much and it started getting complicated because now it's bedtime and the house smells like burned chicken and we're trying to like have people over and my husband's trying to put my daughter to bed and it just was like, this is getting a little complicated. And one night I had a family come over and it was like summertime. So it was light out a little bit longer and they were, they brought their kids with them because it was evening and they didn't have a sitter. And so the kids are like two and four years old and they're okay through the slideshow and then they start losing it they start like wanting to go upstairs to the home they and the parents are like getting up and trying to wrangle them in and um and then my husband had taken my daughter and my dog out for like a hike or something and in the middle of our meeting they walk in the door and my dog's like covered in mud and he's barking and i just was like what is happening right now <laughs> like this is not going well and they left that meeting frazzled and I don't think they bought that much and if they did it was a hurried decision and I didn't feel good about selling it to them and I closed the door and I just was like this needs to change like we need to find a better way because this isn't going to work anymore so that was like one of those knock the house down and rebuild <laughs> kind of moments but like I was able to use the um, the information that I had from my, like my CRM systems about like what sales are going well, what's not going well, what products are most popular. I was able to use that information to inform the way that I set up my virtual sales, which is something that I am 
tweaking still to this day because I do all the time, but has made my product sales and my business grow exponentially since switching from in-person to virtual. And it's eliminated so much stress and so much like extra time doing things for those meetings, working evenings, working, like going out to clients' homes, having them come over. All of those things were eliminated because I put the time in to build the workflow around the ultimate goal of having like a different post session workflow that would work for my life and work for my clients' lives better too. So I guess in answer to that question though, about how to differentiate between when to put more into growth and when to put more into creating space for ourselves, Mm -hmm. a lot of it has to do with paying attention to what's going on. There is an assumption like you talked about earlier. A lot of times I think with photographers, whether it's conscious or subconscious, which is, this is just how things are. And I've just got to, I've got to hustle. I've got to push through it. it Yeah. Yeah. And rather than taking a step back and making the changes that we need to for ourselves and minimizing the possibility of burnout, creating a more efficient system, which Mm -hmm. not so ironically allows us to build a more successful business as well. Mm -hmm. It's all intertwined and we just have to listen. Like we're photographers. Our job is to notice, to pay attention. And oftentimes we do that so much with our work and not enough in our own lives. And we have to notice like, where's the tension? Where's the tension for our clients? Where's the tension in our families? And how can we use those to work together instead of like making those things combat one another? Yep. That's it. Yeah, that's a great way to sum it up. Yeah. Hey, I want to, as we close here, at Leah, just pull up your website, the education part portion of your website, because I know that you help, you offer coaching to creatives, helping them with their workflow. I, I love the way that you mm-hmm. word, worded this right here. Simplify the list and decide your next right thing. You know, we talked about intentionality mm-hmm. and actually <laughs> being clear about what it is that we're trying to work toward. Mm-hmm. So I think that's a great way to sum that up. But just briefly, if you don't mind, just share with our listeners that the, the type of services or coaching that you offer. Yeah, thank you. I I use the word coaching very strategically because I think a lot of times we see uh, mentoring offered and that is really, really helpful. Totally recommend it. But mentoring and coaching are two different things in my book because coaching is enabling a photographer to find out what actually works best for them and figuring out what systems and workflow will fit best into the way that they want to run their business. Mentoring is to me more of like, here's my ideas and here's how I do things. And if you want some of that, you can take it. Like, I think it's a different, um, kind of perspective. So Mm -hmm. what I, what I like to do is to have conversations with photographers just from a place of experience. And, you know, if, you know, ask those questions, I am, I am happy to like say, anything about the things that I've learned because I feel like I've done things in every single way possible. Um, so I have experience to share and I'm happy to do it. And But I also, like on top of that, I think it goes further. Uh, I don't want to help photographers run my business. I want to help them run their businesses. <laughs> So yeah, different, being mm-hmm. super clear about what mm-hmm. they are actually struggling with and giving them specific guidance as to how they can improve those, those particular issues. Yes. Yes. Makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Well, we'll, I, I popped this up on a screen just a second ago, but for anybody listening in, if you go to lofirefly.com, go to the education section, you can learn more about this and reach out to Leah uh, if you'd like to do that. Leah, I, I do appreciate you making time to come share with us a lot of practical information today that I think is super applicable to really any business owner, certainly for photography business owners. I really appreciate you sharing with all of us today. Thank you 